Hey guys, welcome to Vidavik Arts. I'm Josh, and today we are kind of developing what we worked on in the previous video, uh, the Rhino from uh, Warhammer 40k. So if you uh, haven't seen that video, I advise you go check it out because we're kind of jumping from the end of that video uh, straight into this one because I couldn't have made this model without that. So go check that one out and then come back here and watch this one. So in the previous video, I talked about making a scorpion tank or developing the rhino into something that looked more along the lines of Halo or the Halo series. And uh, I'm really happy with this result. <laughs> uh, you can see right down here, uh, I've, I've, I've made the tank. You can see it's come out really well. This is completely finished. Um, you can see the turret and the size is quite enormous. If I get a Space Marine here and just put him right next to the guy, the tank is huge. <laughs> I like, I can't express how big it is. This is the Rhino from the previous video. And um, yeah, it's, it's pretty big. So like one of these sets of tracks is almost the entire size of the entire tank. And my previous videos, like this tank here, is, it's very small. You can see just the turret alone, if I replace this turret here, uh, it's it's huge. But it still works if you want to have a massive turret. All the turrets are interchangeable, like I said from the original videos where I made these. Um, they might look a little bit different, but um, they definitely work with each other. Now, how did we make this? Now, like I said, you have to go check out the video from before, which was the Rhino that I made. and. Um, Let's just jump into how this was actually made because it was a lot of fun and uh, it was actually really easy. And if anyone out there knows how to make models and stuff, you're more than welcome to kind of do this kind of stuff with the models that I've made. It's simply just converting stuff that already exists. So let's get into it. Now I wanted to keep the hull almost identical to the Rhino. Um, I wanted to make it look like it was based off a rhino but the more I worked on this the more I realized that was going to be a really hard thing to do. And one of the first things and main things I worked on were the tracks. I recycled tracks from the lemon tank and uh, yeah I kind of got that basic shape and then laid it out and recycled a whole bunch of parts from those tracks. Now one of the cool things about the scorpion is its dual tracks uh, but Making dual tracks means that the tank has to be a lot bigger than I first anticipated. I had to stretch this thing out to probably uh, an extra 50% larger, so it's not too much bigger, but it is definitely noticeable when you look at the Rhino and this tank side by side. Now this tank is, well, it needs a turret because without it, it it's not really a tank, it's just a transport of some kind. And um, this turret was... It's kind of my own little hodgepodge. It is very, very inspired by the turret from Halo, but um, it's missing a lot of parts. I would actually like to come back to this and potentially modify it even more, or even start from scratch and make a Halo Scorpion tank and possibly even some Halo Marines and stuff to go with it. I think that would be really awesome. By maybe even a Warthog, who knows? Um, I think that would be really fun. But for this model, we just stuck with um, a Rhino conversion. Now, the piece at the back of this tank might look a little bit strange. It's a bit of a, a butt for the tank. It's where the, uh, the the rounds actually come out. So once the tank fires, the shells have to come out from somewhere. And I noticed in the Halo game, I think it was Halo 4 or Halo 3, when you fired the tank, shells would come out of the back of the cannon and it was really awesome. So I thought I would add that kind of little detail into this tank just because I thought it was really cool and um, yeah it's just a little little detail. Now the engine on this is uh, well I had to add in an engine block because on the Rhino the engines are kind of in the tracks it's very very strange the uh, it's got those twin engines with the exhaust pipes on each side of the track so I think there's like four um, exhaust pipes in the entire thing but for a traditional tank, that's a bit strange having him in that position, so I had to change that quite a bit, completely, completely different. 
Now the track armor itself was, it's just more or less a cube that's been converted to be quite nice and bulky. Uh, I had to make sure that it was printable without supports. So I have gone back and um, designed a little bit more to uh, make it a little bit more friendlier to the eye. So the front track isn't just flat. It actually has a little bit of a support piece that makes it look a little bit better than yeah, just having a, a blank kind of uh, track exposed, which would uh, be very difficult to paint and make it look good. I've, I've done my best, um, but yeah, without making this model uh, require heaps of supports, um, we've just gone with that flat track look. Hopefully you guys don't mind uh, if any of you want to convert the part or possibly use tracks from another model, you're more than welcome to. This uh, tank is very diverse. I think I've introduced more parts for this that you could interchange for a whole bunch of different models. You could potentially use the tracks from the Rhino on this or any of the other tanks that I've made. You could use the tracks from this on them or the other way around. It's, it's all interchangeable. That's one of the cool things about these tanks that I'm working on. Um, I'm going to be working on them I think forever. I'm just going to be making tanks as we go along. So hopefully you guys uh, get a little experimental and decide to download these over on Thingiverse. They're all completely free and make some of your own custom tanks using the parts that I'm providing because I think it'd be really cool to see some, you know, different kind of looking tanks that I would never have imagined. But yeah, it's all it's all out there, and I hope to see some people doing that someday. Who knows? Um, there's going to be more tanks as we go along, uh, especially when we get to October. We're going to have the Orktoberfest again, and um, we all know that orcs love their looted tanks. So you might see a looted version of this, possibly. <laughs> Who knows? There's going to be a lot of tanks, as uh, as I said. Um, throughout the years, so hopefully everyone is enjoying them. Now the barrel on this tank, I'm just going to be honest with you, it did not print properly, so I kind of just, uh, yeah, I kind of just like saved what was left behind and just glued it straight to the barrel and uh, straight to the turret and I painted a little black dot at the tip to make it look like it was a hole. Now the reason why it didn't print was because I didn't have that first layer support which is it's I think it's called brim or something on the Cura settings I just had nothing and once it got to a higher point it it just fell over and broke now the color scheme is nothing special I've just gone with an undercoat of Lauren Forest with highlights of Elysian Green now this is kind of the scheme I go with with a lot of the uh, army style tanks I do use the uh, Orc Boss Green and, and those kind of colors for my Iron Harvest models. But for things that I want to do that are like, uh, it's kind of like a US Army style scheme. It's got like an olive drab kind of feel to it and I think it works really well with um, Imperial Guard models and uh, stuff like the Halo series models. It just It's just a really good color scheme. Uh, I wouldn't really want to go with an orc boss green just because it's a very dark green and uh, it might not look how I envisaged. Now I've also done something really cool with this model. I don't know if you can see it, but there is splatters all over this thing. Um, if we have a look at the model here, you can see there's a whole bunch of brown in there and a whole bunch of splatters. Now all I did was I grabbed a brush like this one here and make sure it's like nice and flexible and clean. And I used a contrast paint here. Now I know this is totally not what contrast paints are meant for, but it's the contrast snake bite leather. I just dipped it in there, made sure I got a heavy chunk and I splattered it. And I actually made a mess all over my table. It'll make a mess over everything. I've still got the paint on my fingers. So it's a very messy process. Maybe wear some gloves. Uh, I have noticed with that paint, there is a little bit of a problem. Uh, it doesn't really dry non-glossy so it doesn't dry with a matte finish it does tend to look like it's permanently wet um, works for this because it is meant to look like mud but I think if you wanted to use that for other means it might not work very well my own opinion but here we have the scorpion rhino hybrid uh, it's bloody gorgeous I really love this tank um, I can imagine having some troops sitting here on either side 
uh, potentially having a turret guy here. Uh, I was going to put a turret in there. I might leave it to you guys to customize that for yourself. I may come back to it later on um, and add in turrets. I don't know. Um, the turret here itself, uh, I know the Halo one has a another little machine gun post here. But in Halo 1 it doesn't, so it, it's kind of official, it makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a really big tank, it takes a long time to print, it took around uh, 17 plus hours, uh, purely because of the size. I'm pretty sure this one only took maybe uh, 10 to 15 hours, so I mean if I just put size them up against my head here, there's, there's a very big size difference, you can see. I mean, just the width alone is huge. And the tracks alone, like, look look at those tracks. Look at these tracks. Very, very big difference. Uh, hopefully you guys like these. Uh, these are very different models to what I've been recently making with all my D&D stuff. Uh, I am going to be focusing a lot more on 40k, so this could easily be used in an Imperial Guard army without any issue. And, yeah, we're going to be working a lot more on 40k, so let's get into it. Hopefully you guys get into it with me. Otherwise, that's the end of this video. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me over on Patreon. And if you want to support me further on these videos, you're more than welcome to head over there. And you can pledge a couple dollars per video or per month. Completely up to you. Now, you will get a couple of extras over there. You get some uh, extra models and some some very minimal behind-the-scenes stuff. If you want to see some of my behind-the-scenes stuff, head over to Instagram and you can follow me there. Uh, Vitavik Arts, obviously. And if you are making these models for yourself and painting them and printing them and doing whatever it is you do with them, make sure you post a make over on Thingiverse or on Instagram where I'm much more active and I'll probably follow you because you're bloody awesome and I love your work. Anyway, as always, stay awesome and have a good one. See you guys.